Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to roll a slab and an even slab. That's the very important part. What you need is a slab mat so the slab doesn't stick to the table. These are slab guides or you could call them thickness strips. They're located um, together. You want to make sure that they're exactly the same thickness. All the measurements are written on the end. This is one quarter inch thick thickness strip. It's um, pretty typical for most slabs. And a pretty um, big slab roller, depending on how big of a slab you're going to make. I always like to just use the big ones. Um, and I'm going to start off with a ball of clay. And what I like to do is just pat it as much as I can, as thick as I can, because it's less elbow grease. And I'm going to pound it. I feel like I'm abusing something. <laughs> okay, one of the things about choosing a rolling pin is you have to make sure that it's clean because if there's clay debris or pieces on here, when you're rolling the rolling pin, it's gonna leave marks and divots in your slab and you don't want that. You wanna have a nice smooth slab. So make sure it's clean before you grab it. Another thing is you wanna make sure that your rolling pin is going to be big enough for the slab that you're rolling because you want to make sure that your slab uh, guides are underneath the rolling pin at all times so that everything is lined up. If you have too small of a rolling pin, it's going to slide within the slab guides, which will not keep it at a uh, one-fourth inch thickness. Okay, so when I start, I like to pat it down. A little bit more. And you also need to go in two directions. So what I do is I roll in one direction, one or two passes, and then I flip it to the side. If you keep rolling it in one direction and run direction only, your molecules are lining up in only one direction, so you're going to have clay slab that warps and curves in the kiln or will dry funny. So you want to do this, flip it, turn it. I know that my slab is even. You want to come here for a second? If you have lines or grooves in your slab, then you're not down to the level. So make sure, sometimes I'll tap it. There's still lines and grooves, so I'm going to flip, actually flip this over. And sometimes that action will make it even anyway. And flipping it stretched it out a little bit. So what I'm going to do to make it smooth again is I'll take my metal rib of doom and I will smooth the surface. When you are ready to transfer your slab onto another, onto a wear board or something else, you want to make sure you have a newspaper so that it doesn't stick to your wear board. Just put the newspaper down, put your wear board down on top of it, slide your hand underneath, flip it like that. to do the same thing with my metal rib of doom to make sure it's 
nice and smooth on the surface. showing you about uh, how to make a sugar skull and there's various things you can do with a sugar skull and you have options so in this one where it's completed this is a magnet I have several magnets on the bot on the bottom you can do um, a magnet or you can make an ornament or just a tile for your wall I have one at home that is a it's much larger and it's um, it's a spoon rest and it looks really nice and these are just different sizes. So there's also this for extra credit if you want to do a three-dimensional one, which is not on this video, but I wanted to share this option. This is extra credit. It's made out of pinch pots. For this video though, I'm going to show you how to make the slab version. I have these little templates and there are different shaped sugar skulls that you have to choose from. And I'm just going to get this one and place it on a clean part of the slab. I put way too much clay on here. You don't really need this much clay. I had probably a couple of pounds that, uh, oops, that I didn't need. So just take a needle tool. You don't need an X-Acto knife. X-Acto knife is for leather hard clay. Needle tool is better for soft clay. So I'm just gonna hold my hands in place or hold the little template in place carefully and slowly trace around the sugar skull template. you have your sugar skull. It might be a good time to write your name on the back or and your period number before you and then you can flip it over and do the sugar skull stuff on the other side. This is a really good time to smooth edges either with a damp sponge, not a wet sponge, but a damp sponge or your fingertips. So what you're gonna do is you take your thumbs these guys, two of my favorite things, and you're going to evenly place them right above the ears, about mid midway, and try to make sure that they're angled how you want, and you're gonna press down, and you have two little eye sockets. Next, I'm going to take one of these little pointy plastic deal thingies and I'm going to make the jaw. So I write a, do like a little smiley face. I, I don't even know what that's called. I guess jaw. And I just try to make it even. Okay. Then I start in the middle. I'll try to find the middle for the teeth. them together. You can clean it up when it's a little uh, firm, when the clay is a little bit more firm. For the nose, there is a perfect tool for that. So this little guy, perfect for making nose nostrils, little bone areas. So you can take this, this tool 
and you find the middle of your sugar skull and you're going to press down and bring it up. You can take the side, press down and bring it up until you have like a little heart shape piece and you can adjust it to make it look pretty. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so there's a few things that we can do to uh, clean up the uh, sugar school. You, a damp sponge, not a wet one. A wet one isn't going to do anything. Uh, but soak your clay and make a big muddy mess. So you just want a damp one. You squeeze out all the water and gently take it around the edges. If there's some uh, tougher areas or smaller areas that your sponge doesn't get to, you can use a paintbrush. This is my favorite tool in the whole wide world. Excess water off. So then you take the, sponge, the paintbrush damp. And in the other video, I didn't show you this, but you can make a cute little dimple in the chin. And somehow I seem to mess this little part up, but I'm gonna fix it just by using my brush, heaving it out. You don't wanna have sharp edges on tiles. Um, make sure that it's smooth because once it is fired, it will be sharp. Make sure everything is soft and there's no pieces of clay clumped or any cut marks. Okay, so I'm gonna smoothen the nostrils a little bit. And it may be too wet still to clean the teeth so I can wait on that. But if your piece is a little drier, go ahead and clean these out. You wanna have a nice clean grooves. We'll make it much easier to paint. We will be using regular acrylic paint for this, unless you make a spoon rest, in which case we'll use under glaze with a clear glaze on top. We need to make that food safe. like you can even make this jaw area wider perfect I, I don't like to talk on the phone I don't know why they call me tell them to stop calling me okay so I made a little extra just uh, or you can just take a scrap of your clay and try out different designs or ideas that you have. I actually have some clay stamps that I'm gonna try out and see if I wanted to stamp how it looks before I put it. It could be something. Trying different pressures on there. Let's see, here's a, a flower. That might be something. And you can also use um, this little plastic pointed tool to make dots. I think I'm going to do that with this guy. The tricky part is getting them even so that they're nice and symmetrical. Ish. Let's see, do I want to do anything else? What do you think I should do? Maybe we'll do a flower in the middle. Perfect. And then any other decorations, I think I'm going to just paint on there. Everything else will leave.
passes. I'm gonna just clean this bad boy up and that's it for the greenware stage. We'll get the rest after it's fired.